me, proper church bells have not rung out in Barrow at all this century. And that's because the bells of St James's were declared unsafe in 1999. And it's the only church in the town with proper bells and it's belfry. But today... A major milestone has been reached in the £160,000 project to restore them as they were taken down for restoration work. Our furnished reporter Jenny Dennett went for a look. Now I am resisting the temptation in a rather cheesy fashion to slump forward and say the bells, the bells, like the uh, hunchback of Notre Dame, which is very hard when faced with this scenario. With me have Keith Newby, who has rung here and been involved in this great operation to get them down. Now tell me about these bells. Now they're, they're not gleaming brass, are they? They're quite ancient. The, the bell metal, and bell metal 75% copper and 25% tin. And that's what gives it the, the, the proper sound. The proper sound and on a greenish tinge 1877. as well. 77. It's on the top of them. So we're talking, what, 136 years We are. Old. And Goodness. they've been up, up there ever since. There's eight bells in front of you now, all on, ready to be uh, transported down to the Whitechapel Bell Foundry. I'm Stan Wormsley, and, and I learned to ring in 1951. I came to Furness in 1968. And one of the churches I rang first of all was here in St. James Barrow in Furness. I rang mostly at Dalton in Furness and one of the ringers I've rung with most of all was Jack Bagnall. Now, Jack Bagnall was for many years the tower captain here in St. James Barrow in Furness. And Jack died in 2009. And as part of the obituary in the ringing world I wrote, I mentioned about the fact that the bells here weren't being rung. Dennis Ellisden, who now lives in Essex, saw this obituary and he was interested because he was taught to ring here in Barrow by Jack Bagnall. And so he contacted me and said that he would donate some money so that to help the fund to get the bells rehung. And over the last few years, much work has been done, and here we are with a, the set of bells rehung and ringing out loud and clear. Well, my name is Dennis Ellisdon. I live in Essex on the borders of London. I learnt to bell ring at St uh, James's when I was an apprentice at the shipyard. It's been part of my life. I've been in charge of towers in the London area and held offices in, in bell ringing circles in the south of England. And when I heard that they were going to try and restore the bells at Barrow, which had not been rung for a long time, uh, I volunteered to um, make a donation. Well, Jeff Pullin uh, had various ideas of what to do with the restoration, and there were various plans put forward, and we finally agreed that um, if the job was going to be done properly, the bells needed to be removed from their existing position and uh, uh, refurbished and then put in a brand new frame lower in the tower. Uh, I'm Hugh, one of the volunteers that uh, were involved in taking the bells out. We're now in the original bell chamber where uh, the bells were hung in 1877 uh, and they completely filled this chamber. Uh, what we had to do was uh, lower the bells down through the tower. Now, it sounds fairly straightforward perhaps, but uh, all the fittings were quite rusted uh, and so we had to take the wheels off, uh, the clappers had to come out first of all, uh, and eventually everything went down to the ground floor uh, for refurbishment. Right. We're now in the new bell chamber. Uh, the first job when we started installing the bells here was actually to put these two uh, huge primary beams in place and the four secondary beams. Uh, these then uh, were concreted in place by Lex and left to, uh, for the concrete to harden for, about, for a week or so. And then we all came back and started on the rest of the work. Uh, for each of the bells, of course, we had to uh, hoist up uh, the side frames. Uh, 
and then the bells in order. Uh, we started with the bells on the outside, uh, because all, everything, of course, came through a hole in the middle of the floor. Uh, and the final two bells were uh, the tenor uh, and the fifth, which are over this uh, trapdoor. Uh, when everything was uh, loosely assembled, uh, we then uh, had to fit all the wheels, uh, the stays and the clappers. Uh, the wheels come in two halves uh, and they're joined together with uh, fairly uh, fragile tenons in the joint. Uh, uh, and the wheel irons to go on the outside which stop them warping. Uh, the very last job was actually fitting the clappers. Uh, before that, uh, Phil Dunn at the bell hanger rang each bell up just to check it was clear of the frame, not hitting anything, uh, and everything seemed to perform as it should do. Hi there, my name's Carl. This is my wife Rachel and uh, our new first child Catherine. Um, we've been asked to s s come down and say a few words about our experiences uh, in, in the bell ringing community, the bell ringing world. Um, I think it's, it's an interesting uh, hobby in itself. Um, it's, it's mentally um, challenging as well as, um, as, as being physically demanding as well. Some of the bells are very heavy uh, and take some, some managing. Uh, although there are lighter bells, of course, that uh, that are much easier to ring. We've we've met lots of really interesting, um, quite funny, and um, uh, a wide and varied r range of people, really, um, which make up the bell ringing community. Uh, and it's one that we, we're really uh, we we get a lot from, and uh, we're really happy to be part of. I'm Brenda Pierce. One of the church wardens here at St James and I've been for about 20 years. So I've got to tell you now, these bells are an absolute delight to me. It's something I always envisaged would happen, but it was really just a dream. Uh, and then that dream became reality. The bells are a great asset really to the church because they make the people aware of the surrounding area, A, that the church is uh, here. It's lovely for weddings, it announces our services during the week. The eight bells usually ring on a Sunday morning and then of an evening, maybe just two or three, just to, uh, you know, just to let people know that's uh, aware of the services. So really, they're a wonderful asset to Barrow in Furness as well and uh, never thought this would happen. Hi, my name's Andy Pollock and I'm the tower captain at St James's Church in Barrow Furness. And I'm stood at the moment in the ringing room. So in this ringing room we have a series of ropes. We've got eight bells in this tower. But over the years the bells in St James uh, got corroded from pollution and from the salty sea air. And the frame and all the fixtures and fittings corroded or rotted uh, to the extent where we weren't able to ring them anymore. So, as part of the, uh, the job, there was a mammoth task of taking all the old uh, bells out of the tower. But it wasn't just the old bells, they had the old frame that was in the way of uh, the work that we needed to do in the old bell frame. They went and uh, they took the bells and they took the corrosion off the outside and they tuned the inside of the bells and they re created a brand new frame and put it in the chamber above. But a floor lower than the original bells were, were hung. And that's made for a lot of advantages and has made it much easier to ring the bells. So now we have this fantastic set of bells which we're looking forward to ring uh, for many years to come and obviously we'll be passing them on to uh, whoever takes them on after, after, after we've, we've gone. Uh, but as part of that uh, idea that we're now passing this on for generations to come, we thought it was important to try and record some uh, information about all the work that went into this restoration project uh, for posterity really to to try and uh, capture in some essence of, of what has gone on and who was involved 
and, uh, and the fantastic job that they managed to do. So as part of that scheme we invited the local uh, students from the Furness College to come down and, uh, and see if they would like to create a, a video to capture this information uh, and be able to record that and preserve that uh, in a way that we could then pass on to people in the future and they can look back and see what we did and, uh, and hopefully uh, they won't have to do a similar job in the future um, and they will be able to look back and say and be, appreciate what everything that's gone on. I just want to say well done to everyone who has been involved in this project on behalf I think of the whole town but my reaction so far I have to say from the locals has been uh, has been they like it I'm not I'm not surprised I've been up there in the tower uh, it is they're extraordinary I mean they're so noisy when you when you're in there but it is such an impressive thing uh, to have been able to achieve I know how so there's been so much work which has gone into this but it will stand this area in in great stead for you know, many many generations to come so many congratulations